Hello! In this recording, I'm going to talk about how we can make multi-dimensional um, uh, NumPy arrays. And I'm going to look at an important use case, which is how we can use these multi-dimensional arrays uh, to create images. So here, you can see I've already imported um, PLT. We're going to be plotting some images soon. And I've imported NumPy. I'm creating an array here, and you can see it um, right there. And uh, the way you've often uh, discovered the size of things before is you'll use the length function, right? You can use the length on uh, lists or dictionaries, and you can use them on arrays too. Um, it does exactly what you'd expect. Okay, there's three items there. Um, but there's another way we can look at the size of a NumPy array, and that's with the shape attribute. So I can say a, a.shape, and I see that that gives me a tuple. Um, there's only one. Uh, one number in that tuple, and that means this is a one-dimensional array, and along that dimension there's three elements. So if I wanted to, I could create another array like this. I could say b equals that, and, um, and now I'm going to try to create a two-dimensional array. I'm going to say 4, 5, 6, and, um, and we'll, well, we'll take a look at that and then look at the length of b. Um, here you can see that the length is not telling me much. What is it doing? It's telling me how many rows I have, and I have two rows. Whereas in contrast, if I look at b.shape, it tells me both of those dimensions. It tells me that I have uh, two rows and, uh, and also three columns. So all the length function is ever doing with a matrix is just pulling out that first number from the shape tuple. Right? So you're not going to do this uh, length as often. You're going to be doing shape more often now. Um, when we were dealing with these NumPy arrays. Um, now it turns out uh, there's special uh, words for these different um, arrays. A one-dimensional array um, is called a vector, right? So let me make a, a note of this. One-dimensional is a vector. And down here I have two-dimensional. Two-dimensional um, is called a matrix. Um, it turns out that I can also create uh, NumPy arrays like this. I can say uh, s equals um, numpy dot array. In almost every example I've been doing, I've been putting brackets here so far, but I'm not going to. I'm just trying to say um, three now, and so I'm going to look at that. Um, and if I look at uh, the shape of that, what do I get? I get an empty tuple, right? So that's a zero dimensional value, and that's called a scalar. Scalar, right? So zero dimensions uh, is called a scalar. And so I see I have all these different things, right? So 1D vector, 2D matrix, 0D scalar. And there's a general word for all of these. So if I have some arbitrary number of dimensions, I don't know how many, uh, that is going to be called a tensor, right? So um, it turns out that all these things are tensors, right? My vectors are tensors, matrices are tensors, scalars are te uh, tensors. and um, and uh, by the end of this, I'm going to be showing you an example where we have a 3D uh, tensor. Okay, so so often if you see that word, that's what it means. It's just kind of a generalization um, of all these different shaped objects. Okay, now it turns out if we want to, uh, we can uh, reshape the objects we have. So for example, if I look at, um, uh, let me look at B here. Um, I see that right now I have two rows and three columns. Um, if I wanted to, I could say b.reshape, and I can say, well, how many rows do I want? Let's say I want three rows and two columns. And you can see it shuffles all those values <clears throat> around, kind of filling them in, right? So one, two goes here, uh, three and four goes to here, and five and six goes to here. Right? So I'll often do that, we can reshape things. I can also change, um, the number of dimensions I have. If I wanted to kind of flatten this thing into one dimension, um, I could say that I want that, right? I want a scalar with six values in it. Um, if I want to, I can also, um, let me go back to this example I just had. Um, if I wanted to, I could try to just leave this up to Python, right? Well, I mean, if I put something like this, like four, right? I can't do that, right? I only have six values. How can I get a three by four object, right? I can only do um, values that multiplied together add up to six. Um, now, since these must add up to six, if I give you most of the values, a uh, NumPy can figure out the other ones. So the way I'll do that is I'll just say negative one. And then uh, Python says, hey, we need six values. 
you've said there are three rows, um, negative one means figure out, hey, there's two columns, and it'll do that automatically. Okay, so let's, um, the way people often use this is they can kind of quickly create matrices. For example, um, if I say create some ones, uh, and let's say I want, um, you know, 80 ones like that, I could say reshape, and, um, and maybe what I'll do is I'll put this into uh, eight rows and 10, and 10 columns, right? So I can quickly get these nice matrices in that way. And of course, I could have left either of these numbers off if I wanted, right? If I said, if all I know is I want 10 columns, I'm going to do it like that. Okay, so what can I do with, um, with these matrices? There's lots of different uh, uses for them. Um, one is that I can use them to re represent images. So let me <clears throat> let me do that. Maybe instead of this, I'm going to create. Um, uh, I'll call this image equals that. And, um, and instead of ones, I'm going to start off with zeros, right? So I'm going to say zeros like that. Let me take a peek at that. And uh, and you might remember I imported uh, matplotlib pyplot as plt. One of the things we have in plt is um, image uh, show. And when I use image show, I can either put a matrix here, um, or what I'm going to do by the end of this demo is put a 3D uh, tensor, right? So I, mean, I can do those. And so, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show this matrix I have, right? This uh, matrix, this two by two matrix, I'm going to show what that looks like. And I get this kind of solid, it's all one color. And that's because all these numbers um, are the same. Right? And I can see it's kind of this, it almost looks like black, but it's this weird purple color. Um, but let me just specify that um, I want to have a color map um, that's on the, it's going to be a gray scale, right? So I'm going to do that. That actually just maybe gray. Uh, let me see. There it is. Okay. So zero in this case is mapping to black. Um, if I wanted to, I could. Um, if I want to show you have some variety here, um, instead of having zeros, I'm going to say a range, right? I want all the numbers uh, from zero to 80. Well, I guess just short of 80. And then I can plot that if I want. And you can see, uh, sure enough, we start from the top left corner uh, is the darkest color zero. And then uh, it's mapping 79 onto white in this bottom right right hand corner, right? So I can create images um, in this way. Okay, so let me show you um, one last example here. Uh, let's get some real data. Um, let, let's say I want to get an image from um, Wikipedia, and I have this cool picture here um, uh, of this ladybug. I may open this up and click on that, and I may right click on this and, and copy the image address. And uh, once I've copied that URL, I'm going to head over here and I'm going to download it. I'm going to say wget. Uh, that's the image. That's the scientific name for it. Um, I'm going to say dash capital O uh, bug dot. And I see this is a JPEG, so I'm going to keep that the same. A JPEG, I'm going to download that. Um, if I come over here, I, can, I should be able to open this up here as well, and I can see it. Um, very cool. And so, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to read it in, right? So I'm going to say plt dot read image. Uh, actually, is it image read? I think it's it's backwards, right? It's um, I think it's im read. Sorry, and I can give it a file name here. So I'm going to call that bug dot jpeg, and um, and that's going to read, be read into an array like so. And let me take a peek at that array. I see. Okay, I have all this stuff here. Let me look at the at the shape of this array. So what, what's going on here? Uh, I can see I have a three-dimensional array. And, and of course, going back to that picture, right? It's just a, it's a two-dimensional picture, right? So, so what's going on here? Um, well, this first bit is the rows, right? So this is how many rows I have. And then this is how many columns. This is the height and then the width. And then what is this three? Um, it turns out that each pixel of color here is a combination of red, green, and blue light, right? And that's why I need these three dimensions um, like so, okay? So uh, let, me, let me just take a look at this quick. I'm gonna see if I can visualize it. So I'm gonna say, 
uh, show, and I want to show that array. And, uh, and sure enough, there it is, right? And you can actually see along the x-axis, right, that I have 25, 21. That's those um, columns I have. This is how many rows I have. Right, so I have this three-dimensional um, structure. Now, what's going to be weird about this, if I look at it now, um, what's going on here? So I have rows first. So when I'm looking into this whole structure, um, what that means is that this is one row of data. Here's another row of data. And, um, and what's going to be confusing is that, uh, is that the next piece is columns. And, uh, and so what that means is that uh, within this row, this whole piece here is a column. Okay. And then within that column, I'm sorry, is that right? This whole piece here is a column within a row. Right? So that whole piece selected is one, one cell on a table, right? It's in um, the first column of the first row. And then these three numbers in here, you might feel like they're columns, but they're not. Those are layers, right? So you should think of this layer on top of this layer on top of this layer and kind of this weird three dimensional um, rectangle. And so what this means is that I can slice this in different ways. Um, so there I have my basic image. Uh, let me let me try to slice this. Um, now that we're sl slicing in these three dimensions, um, we really get uh, three slices, right? So we get a slice one, comma, slice two, and slice three. And, um, and, and so let me just reiterate this. This is my row slice. This is my column slice. And this is my layer slice. Um, when, when we're talking about images, right, these three layers correspond to different colors, and those will often be called um, channels, right? So that's kind of an image-specific terminology. And, and so what I could do is I could say something like, hey, I want all the, all the colors, and uh, let's say I want all the columns. Um, but let's say I want to crop this image. Um, let's say that instead of going to 2,500, I want to go to 2,000. Um, what I could do here is I could say, well, I need to put the slice here. I just want to go up to 2,000, like so. And, um, and then I get this new thing. And then I can, if I want to, show that, right? I can slice that image, image like so. And um, I have an extra G there, just I am. And you can see, okay, I was able to slice that uh, image just fine. Um, okay, so uh, one last detail here that I want to go over is what if I try to pull out just one of these uh, layers, right? So I can do that. Um, I'm going to do it like this. Paste this. So in this case, I want to have all the pixels, right? I want all the rows and all the columns. Uh, but let me just grab one of these layers. So I'm not even going to put a slice here. I just want an individual layer. Um, it, it turns out that zero maps to red, one maps to blue, and two maps to green. Right, so I'm just pulling out all the red colors here. Right, so I'm going to do that. And um, it, it kind of looks weird, right? Because when, um, when, I have, uh, when I have the 3D tensor right, with the red, green, blue, it's showing it in color. Here, I'm only giving it a two-dimensional structure. Maybe I can just prove that to you quick. Right? If I look at the shape of that thing, it's a two-dimensional structure. So, so it's on this one color spectrum, right? So I should probably actually say what the color map is, right? I can say that's gray. Uh, how did I? I thought I had done this before. Uh, didn't I? Oh, it's lowercase gray. I'm sorry. Okay, so gray, right? And uh, and I can see it really pops out where the re where the red color is. Whereas if I do something like this, that's actually a very dark portion, right? The the shell, right, doesn't have much blue there. Uh, probably doesn't have much green either, right? But if I am looking at the red colors, then that's where there's a lot of color um, on the beetle, right? Because the beetle is, is red. Okay, so I'm going to be letting you play with this a little bit more. Um, and so go, go do those exercises.